Hey everyone, this is Joe Gamble and I'm going to talk a little bit about the power station self-attenuation feature, which is a little known and spoken about in hushed tones, kind of secret function that anyone can use uh, to add a little bit or a lot of bit of power amp saturation and uh, rocket sauce to your tone and playing experience if you're using a preamp or a modeler uh, to record directly into your DAW. So for those of you who don't immediately know what the heck I'm talking about and why this little trick would be advantageous for your own playing and recording, I'll explain. So preamp gain and power amp saturation are two completely different animals. They're like two entirely different ingredients that we can use to design our tonal and playing experience. And while it is true that um, there are countless uh, fantastic tones that are available to us just tweaking the preamp and using a relatively uh, clean power section, it's also true that um, there are a myriad of classic and iconic guitar tones that are based almost entirely on power amp saturation and distortion. And at best, our preamps and our modelers are just attempting to approximate uh, the effect of an entire amp, that is the preamp and the power section, working at a volume so that we get all of the sections of the amplifier working together in concert to give us the best possible sound. So what we're doing with this little trick is we're using the power station to impart its tube power amp mojo to what we already have going on with our preamp. Then we're going to feed that signal back up into the power station's reactive load, which is going to knock everything down to a line level so that we can run that out to our DAW and record silently in our apartments and living environs. So if you're fortunate enough to have a power station lying around at home, you can try this little trick and see if you don't love the results. So to reiterate what we're doing here is we're running our preamp into the power section of the power station. So in effect, we're almost building a complete amplifier using the external preamp or modeler and plugging it straight into the power section of the power station. But then we're taking the output of the power section of the power station, we're running that back up into the reactive load portion of the power station so we can goose the power section, induce power tube saturation and add all that power section special sauce to our preamp tone and then run that whole thing out directly into our recording interface and and then into our DAW to record all of this good stuff. Okay, so let's look at the setup and the connections. So for my example, I'm using the GPDI as my preamp. You might be using an Axe Effects or a Kemper or a Helix or Synergy stuff. Or you might be using the Vintage MP1, JMP1 or Triaxis or whatever floats your boat. All right, so here's how it's done. We're gonna take the line out of our preamp. We're gonna plug that into the line in of the power station. Okay, so the line in of the power station bypasses the reactive load and goes directly to the power section of the power station. And once we've achieved that, we take the speaker out of the power station. We're going to plug that directly into the amp in. So we're taking the out of the power section into the reactive load portion. Then after that, it's going to bump it down to line level. We'll take the line out of the power station and run that directly into our interface and on into our DAW. So the final detail in this operation is to make sure that the impedances match on the speaker out and the amplifier in. So you can see in this example I have them both set to 8 ohms, so we're ready to roll. So that's it as far as the connections are concerned. Uh, but once we're inside of the DAW, uh, like I mentioned in the last tutorial video, um, I'm going to use an IR loader. In my case, within Logic, I use Space Designer. It's just a reverb plugin, and I'll load up an IR so I get some cab simulation going, and uh, then we're ready to make some music. So now that we have everything connected, let's do a quick demonstration and see what we can do with this new added dimension to our sound. All right, so I'm going to play a few examples into my looper here. And uh, we'll do a clean example, a crunch example, and kind of a full-on distortion example. And uh, for each one of those, each time I loop it, we'll keep the settings on the GPDI the same, but uh, we'll increase the saturation coming from the power station each time so you can hear what that imparts upon the sound. Um, now, keep in mind, because we're using um, both the reactive load and the power section of the power station, that all the controls on the front panel of the power station are going to be active and in play. So the presence and depth controls that shape the response of the power section are working, as well as the reactive load switches on the front. But for these examples, I'm gonna keep the presence and depth at noon and the reactive load switches in the flat position. But should you decide to wade into these waters yourself, you'll find even more control and options to tailor your sound exactly the way you'd want it. So let's check it out.
worth mentioning we've been talking about using this feature in the context of silent recording um, and that's probably how most people are going to use it to be honest but uh, we want to remind you that um, it has some great live playing applications too right because we're just taking the line out uh, the power station so we could conceivably run that out to the front of house and let the sound person do their thing with it um, or we could also run it out to another power amp and power some speakers um, so I know some of you guys are going to take this idea and run with it and do some really crazy and interesting stuff and that'll be cool to see. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to play some guitar. So please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you want to see more of this stuff when we put it out. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching and uh, leave any questions that you have below. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.